with uh, Tahir Bashir, and it's great to be talking about uh, digital service providers today. It's our last segment of a uh, five-segment uh, series. So, uh, hi Tahir, and great to have you on. Thanks, as ever, for having me on again. And so, uh, we're going to talk about timing, uh, first of all. So, uh, I've been on a startup before, and timing is essential uh, in the way you structure your business, because uh, a lot of these content deals can take a long time, you know, six months to a year, uh, to achieve enough content deals to actually be able to launch a service. And so, how do you structure your business to survive these timings, uh, given that they can be so extended and kind of unpredictable as well? Yeah, um, I think the first thing is that the founders of the business uh, should be realistic about the timing that these deals take. Make sure that they have uh, someone who's helping them to kind of speed things up. So as a lawyer, you know, I, I very much uh, appreciate the fact that acceleration is really important. And if you're yeah. doing things too slowly, that's a death knell in the business. Um, so trying to keep things moving quickly, reacting um, and not sitting on things. Uh, but from the business's perspective, make sure your team is structured the right way. So Typically with a digital service provider, make sure that you know, if you're hiring people, well, tr try and keep it lean, but if you're hiring people, those are the people that you need at that particular time. So for example, when you first start, you tend to have more technology uh, individuals uh, working on the product themselves. As it grows and you've got the product right, then you move to the sales and marketing team um, and the technology team tends to reduce at that point. Um, so structuring that the right way is really important because otherwise you've got people who've got skill sets that are not being used. Yeah. From a lawyer's perspective, um, you know some of the things that I try and do is uh, make sure that uh, you know I, I've sat in with the team, you know, whilst they're building the product, uh, just to understand the product well and point out any kind of dead ends, uh, put together our own deal terms. I think that's quite important because sometimes you can react to um, deal terms which are provided to you, which don't fit your model. So if you can have your own deal terms which you can present that at the very least, will speed up the negotiations. Yeah. Um, and, and in best, they'll get accepted. Yeah, sure. um, so, yeah. That's great. And talking about the, you know, we're talking about your role as, as a law firm, and uh, there's so many things that you get involved with uh, when you're talking to uh, a DSP, and especially with a new company, there are, uh, you know, issues with uh, how you structure the, the ownership of a company, investors coming in, you know, the, the content deals. So it becomes like really complex really quickly. And, and also quite expensive for the company that's trying to set everything up. So yeah. uh, what's the best way for them to, to make use of, of your time of, or, or any law firm's time and make sure that they maximize that time so that they don't end up spending a huge amount of money uh, and you know, end up without the results they need? Yeah, uh, the communication with the lawyers are important. Yeah. So if you've got the whole team talking to the lawyer all the time, that's expensive. So make sure you uh, you focus who is actually dealing with the lawyers. Usually it's the business development person or the person responsible for licensing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I act for um, uh, technology companies which are not to do with music, and they still have the same types of issues. So there's, you know, the investment, you know, getting those investment deals, get the money in, there's the rights, there's the building of the business, the employment aspects. So from a lawyer's perspective, what are the things that we can do to help? Um, we can help point out the types of issues that need to be dealt with. Yeah. Uh, we can help analyze the model from a, from a, a legal rights perspective. We can help, you know, the right lawyers, we can help uh, introduce to investors and to content owners the right people. So you're speeding up that uh, process and uh, they're dealing with the right people effectively. That's yeah. That's awesome. And uh, and finally, it's important to make sure that uh, the companies analyze the market, they understand what the competitors are, uh, what's happening out there, and also what their dif their different differentiating factor is compared to other companies and what they can offer that other companies can't. So, uh, you know, what's the best way to communicate that to to a rights holder and uh, to really ensure that they realize that you're making a difference, so that you're breaking new ground uh, with the company. Uh, first thing is to make sure that you've analyzed the market. So, uh, you know, don't live in a bubble. See what else is out there and see how you differentiate yourself from them and see what solutions that you're providing that they're not providing. And that then becomes the focus of, you know, why somebody should be involved. It's the same with investors. Why would you put your money in this uh, business? Because you're solving a problem. Um, and then from that point, uh, from a rights, you know, your deals with rights owners, it's not just about the money. It's also about other things that you can give them. Can you give them market intelligence, data, um, 
Are you offering them some of the upside of your business? You know, equity is an interesting uh, option. Uh, I'm not suggesting that you should go in straight with equity, but it's something which, from a rights owner's perspective, means that if they're not making money from day one and they see the business growing, they might get something out of it from that perspective. Um, and then, uh, you know, that the, the promotion and PR value, which is, you know, uh, something that might be interesting to a label because they're effectively great saying to their artists that we can get you out there and do some interesting stuff with you around your touring, etc. That's great. Oh, thank you very much, and uh, thanks for this interesting uh, uh, comments on, on digital service providers. I hope uh, listeners are going to find them. I'm sure they're going to find them really interesting. Yeah, I wish we had more time because there's so many more things to talk about, but yeah, it's been good. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Bye.